I would like to start with my recent visit to a store, uh, to a Walmart kind of store in Texas. It's called HEB. And uh, I was passing through an aisle which was, uh, which had racks and racks full of bars, you know, nutrition bar, protein bar, bars like this, you know, think bar or, uh, you know, the quest bar that you, you get in the gyms as well. Um, and I was wondering that I was looking at some of the nutritional values out there uh, on the bars. Uh, what amazes me is that the taste is good. You know, I really like the taste. Uh, so I looked at the nutritional value and I said, okay, there must be a lot of sugar in there. And uh, there is none. Um, this particular bar says zero gram sugar, zero gram added sugar. Uh, but there are certain other things on the side that they mention. Even the Quest has just one gram, the one gram of bar, uh, one gram of sugar. Now, um, they say there is 11 grams of sugar alcohol. Uh, Quest says there is four grams of erythritol. And then uh, uh, the other bar that I have here says um, there is there are some really complex words which even I can't read. <laughs> so um, question is, are these, um, you know, sugars, uh, sugar alternatives, non-sugar alternatives, good for us, like sugar alcohol. So I and my team at Kobanek dug around and we checked that, uh, you know, is there benefit, are there non-benefits, issues, harms from this kind of uh, uh, nutrition bar, which has uh, these sugar alcohol. And what we found was on 15th May, World Health Organization gave an advisory about uh, risks by having uh, these kind of non-sugar alternatives. Um, so the question for our experts here is, uh, for Mike and Sam, is uh, what are the thoughts on you know, these non-sugar alternatives, uh, which are, you know, of course, used by a lot of people who are dealing with sugar problems, who are dealing with diabetic problems. Um, are there any risks the way um, World Health Organization has highlighted? And um, and before even you go there, what what is the definition of uh, a non-sugar alternative? So, Sam, do you want to uh, kick us off? Sure. Yeah. So, uh, a non sweetener, also called um, sugar substitute or a sugar sweetener, um, these are basically um, items that you see like like xylitol. Um, they are basically like sucralose, aspartamine, they're hard to say, <laughs> erythrol, um, but they are all synthetic sugar substitutes that um, are, as Samit said, they're like zero or very low calorie, um, but they are chemically processed to strip away all of the nutrients. So that's why it adds nothing to the nutrition label at all, which some may think is a positive thing, but in reality, our bodies don't understand that. That's not what we're ever, we've ever been used to processing. We're not supposed to process chemicals. We're supposed to process whole real foods. So um, that's, that's basically what, that's the definition of a um, non-sweetener is a substitute for real sugar. Hmm. So tell me one thing, Sam. Um, you know, there we when we were doing our research, we found there is a category like you know something like Splenda, right? Mm -hmm. um, and there is something similar called Sweet and Low. Um, so, are these really chemicals, or are they? Do they have any uh, natural element to these? Uh, and then there is this category that we came across is natural sugar substitutes like stevia, monk fruit extract. Um, so what are your thoughts on that? You know, so does yeah, you don't have anything that you know is is natural to it. Um, not so for Splenda. No, like I said, Splenda falls under the category of sucralose. So these are basically it contains the compound dextrose or D glucose and then maltodextrin, um, which our bodies don't metabolize the same way and digest the same way that um, we would if we were digesting sugar. So because of this, they aren't fully absorbed by the body. And then, so as they're passing through and then our intestine, specifically the small intestine, the bacteria, because it's not digesting properly and not absorbing, the bacteria will start to ferment these carbohydrates and then cause the indigestion. So then people, 
a lot of times and as the world health organization came out with this article saying that it can lead to health effects but just like the more minor ones that you see pretty initially is like gas and bloating some people get diarrhea um, from these sugar alcohols um so that's that's specifically to splenda and like more like the xylitol the sugar alcohols category but um then you also asked about like stevia and stevia is does come from a plant so it is considered more natural um and it it is a sweetener but again the way it's processed is different it's still processed the same way that these chemical sweeteners are processed so ultimately our bodies again are still not we're not retaining any nutrients because it's wiping away all the nutrients in this chemical processing and that's what really distinguishes the difference between a natural sweetener such as maple syrup like they're that you know you're gonna see how much sugar you're gonna intake when you have ma maple syrup and how many calories but it's naturally occurring and with maple syrup you also have other nutrients so that helps balance it and your body's then able to absorb because there's a lot more going on it's a complex sugar as opposed to these synthetic sugars that have zero nothing so it may oh. seem good on the nutrition label but our bodies are like what are you what's happening right now so let's turn to mike let's let's make it more technical so mike uh, what are your thoughts about the who's uh, advisory on uh, you know alternate sugar tissues so WHO published this um, 390 word article on the 15th of May. It shows WHO has released a new guidelines on a non sweetener, non sugar sweetener NSS, which recommends against use of NSS to control body weight or reduce the risk of non communicable diseases. It's not a non communicable disease, it's not a serious risk. And it's, it's a general terminology, it's not specific. But uh, they made some serious points, um, especially um, NSS increases long-term use and excess use of non-sugar substitutes increases, substantially increases the risk of type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and mortality in adults. Of course, I mean, I don't think anybody gives these to kids, um, you know, non-sugar, uh, you know, I think it's like, 21 and above. So, um, um, I mean, you know, all these names we know already, aspartame, advantamine, I mean, I never heard this, neotame, shakarin, I heard, stevia, uh, like Sam said, stevia is uh, more natural, aspartame. Um, so I have an interesting story about aspartame. I'm a heavy Diet Coke drinker. I drink probably two or three Diet Cokes a day. That's but, not heavy, you know? Oh, you drink more? <laughs> no, Elon Musk drinks, uh, up to eight diet cooks a day. So, yeah, that's why he's you know, 800 times net worth than me. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and I think they should research on, you know, maybe it increases, you know, Warren, brain power. <laughs> Warren Buffett also has six cans of diet cook every day. What? How many? Six cans. Six cans? So I think, uh, so, so I'm not, I'm not thinking to, you know, increase the income. I mean, you know, uh, to take, taking the consuming uh, more diet cook based on this, but uh, I, I'm a heavy, heavy uh, diet cook drinker because um, you know, with, uh, you know, regular book, uh, all the sugars and stuff. And so it's been, um, when this article came up, I, all these years, um, I, I heard all these names, but I don't, I never researched as a pharmacist, I should have researched on these things. But in, um, interestingly, aspartame, um, is a, you know, was invented in 1965 and it's a drug they thought of um using it for curing ulcers as a powder oh. just mix it with water and drink it and it cures ulcers um and uh, you know i think the scientists you know they just uh, you know uh, tap a fingertip and just tasted it and it tastes sweet and uh, over the period of time this uh, powder they started using it as sugar, su sugar alternative yeah how strange and it, it is definitely chemical i mean basically it's a modified protein uh, you know they added some kind of a methyl group to it to give the sweetness so it is chemical but there are no substantial studies it basically i can say probably it's a, it's a slow poison maybe like a 
nobody know what's going on and there is basically this is so what do you call a uh, uh, very less population they use it and there is no wide range study to prove that these things are happening and oh. also to even prove it probably people have to study years together like probably 10 15 years and also some people you know um i drink diet coke but uh, diet coke has a long list of ingredients and also i take so many supplements and i eat so much stuff it's not even relevant basically they, they, they cannot prove the point but it is a chemical for sure so so you're saying that it is not it good is, yeah it is not good um and you know maybe we, sh- we have, it's okay to have but in very little amounts little uh, amounts yeah. not like elon musk not <laughs> but, yeah um no so that's actually a very good point so um we basically as as sam said right uh, it could start with something as simple as indigestion you know your intestine is not able to absorb them because they're kind of chemicals but at the same time uh, we should not overdo it we should keep it limited because if we keep overdoing it then you know world health organization uh, article uh, mm-hmm. yeah. might might come as you know uh, yeah. uh, it might start showing up so uh, we definitely need to be very careful about what we take and um you know we should focus more on having natural food 